Welcome to Every Nation West Coast. We're so excited to see you and join with us. This is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice in it. Hope you have a great time worshipping. Bye. God bless. Good morning everyone and welcome to church. This morning, Every Nation West Coast. As David said, I'm so glad when they tell me, when they say to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. So I believe that you and I are in the house of the Lord. So feel, just get ready to praise and to worship God this morning with us. Amen. Uh, let's pray. Lord, here we are one more time again today in your presence, remembering that your goodness is running after us and that you still call us friends and that your promises a yes and amen. And be glorified, be magnified as we be singing these songs for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we just pray it. Amen.
stop singing your goodness we can never stop singing that you are great you love us and you are faithful to us Lord. you're still good to us and you're still faithful
embracing your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness, Lord. You'll never give up on us, Lord. You'll never forsake us, Lord. You still call us friends. And then we'll keep on trusting you, Lord. Because your promises are yes and amen. You'll abandon us, never leave us, us, because your promises are yes. No matter what time it takes, Lord, no matter how long it takes, Lord, we keep on trusting you. Good morning and welcome to Every Nation West Coast Online Church. My name is Israel and we are happy that you have chosen to join us this morning for our service and that wherever you are, that you, you, you are blessed. <clears throat> Why not say hello or, or send a comment in our chat and we are happy to hear, to hear from you. And if you are new, you can also maybe indicate that we'll be able to get in touch with you. I will be taking you through the announcements uh, this morning. For any links or more information on the announcements, you can get that. You can get more details on our website, which is everynationwestcoast.org/announcements. This morning, we have resumed our in-person services. So, if you would like to join the in-person service. Be sure to be on the lookout for a link that will be shared by Pastor Dennis every Tuesday at 1 p.m. If, however, you find that um, there's no space available, please add your name onto the waiting list and Pastor Dennis will get in touch with you should a spot become available. And also, if that's still not working for you, you can still join us on YouTube at 10 p.m. online. Last Sunday, we started the Victory Sermon Series, which is a time where we, where we want to empower you as believers on how to live a victorious life. So, on Sundays, we will be having the, the sermons, and in the week on Wednesdays, the Connect Groups will be going deeper into discussion on the various topics that will be covered during the sermon. If, however, you are not in a Connect Group, please contact Pastor Dennis, who will be able to put you into a Connect Group or you can visit our website and look for details of the various contact groups that are available. The contact details of the contact group leaders are on our website. The Children's Church teachers have really missed your little ones. So, with the resumption of our in-person services, we will be resuming the Children's Church. So, but due to the fact that we are only limited to 50 people, we have had to combine the two classes for the little ones and unfortunately space is also limited. So, <clears throat> if you find that you don't have any space for your, for your kids in the service, don't fret. We will still be sending out the weekly lessons plan that you can go through with your children. And unfortunately also, we will not be having any Zoom classes anymore. We will be starting an exciting series for the grade 7s and grade 8s that will be led by Selena. This will be the World Changes Wednesdays. This is a time where they will focus on the life of Jesus Christ and also to 
teach them on how to be world changers. So if you have grade sevens or grade eights in your household, please release them on Wednesday, the 18th of August, between 5 and 6 p.m. here at church for them to come and journey with Selena on this exciting journey. The youth will also be having an in-person gathering here at church. That is our unshaken youth. They'll be coming to church on the 20th of August, which is a Friday, from 6 to 7 p.m., where they will also be doing the Victory Series. So we want to equip them to be able to live Victoria's life and also to experience the freedom that comes being a follower of Christ. So why not send your youth to come to church and also the youth, please invite your, your friends from school to come and join you on this exciting series. Every nation Cape Town will be hosting an in-person session for those who are interested in education. They will be tackling this question, how to reform the education space in order for it to lead to the sustained flourishing of our nation. So if you are a leader, a parent, an educator, or even an entrepreneur, or any person who is interested in this topic, you can join them at Every Nation Retreat on the 28th of August from 9.30 in the morning until half past four in the afternoon. The cost is 100 rands per person and it includes lunch and refreshments. If you're interested, you can send an email to young.adults at everynationcpt.org. As I mentioned earlier, the, all the contact details are available on our website under announcements. We would love each and every one of you to support the mission and vision of this church. No matter where you are in life, whether you are facing challenges or obstacles, or God has blessed you so much, you are able to support that mission and, and vision. Please turn with me on your Bibles to 2 Corinthians 8 verse 7. It says, Since you excel in so many ways in your faith, your gifted speakers, your knowledge, your enthusiasm, and your love for us. I want you to excel also in this gracious act of giving. Paul was saying to the church in Corinth that they are doing a great job in so many ways. And I would like to believe that our church here at West Coast is also aspiring to also excel in those areas that Paul has mentioned. At the end of that verse, he also challenges them to say that he's challenging, he's challenging them into in, in giving. So he didn't just leave them at that, at that point. Because further down in the next chapter, in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7, he says, You must each decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. So giving is not about guilting people into giving. But giving actually comes from generosity. And generosity is not something you do, but it is an attitude. God wants us to have a generous giving spirit and as well as a generous attitude. So it is not that I have to give. It is I get to give. I'll pray over the tithes and offering. Father, this morning we come to you we bring all our tithes and offering into the storehouse. We pray, Father, that uh, you bless each and every person listening to this message. Bless each family, Father, no matter what they are facing during this uh, difficult time, Father, that they can put their trust and hope in you. And then by giving, it's a show of faith into, into what you have called each and every one, if one of us to, to do. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, please join me in welcoming to the stage Nikki Jones, who will be sharing uh, the sermon for us today. Enjoy the service.
Good morning, West Coast family. It is such a privilege and an honor to be with you again this morning. My name is Nikki, and I'm here to share God's word with you. And before we start, I think it would just be right for me to actually just consecrate this moment and this time to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come together as a family, we just want to ask you, Father God, to speak to our hearts, to speak directly to our needs, to speak directly, Father God, to what we lack. So, Father, I humble myself and I sit at your feet as a student to learn and to hear what you have to share with us, to be challenged, to be restored with each and everyone else. So we, we look to you, to your word of life this morning. Have your way in our lives and speak through me. Speak to your people. Amen. Amen. And uh, this morning, it's, uh, it's quite a, an exciting uh, message that I've got, quite daunting at the same time as well. Uh, we've been doing the Victory Series, and uh, this week, uh, it is my joy to be able to speak to you about breaking generational curses. And, um, you know, one would ask and say, why talking about generational curses when we are all Christians? We are saved. We are children of God. Those things are done. We are new people. And uh, that is right to an extent. However, we are living in a world where the enemy is so rife, he's unrelenting, and we're still in our bodies, and there's battles that we yet have to face and fight. And so as we go through this, I hope you'll be able to see that these things we need to still break through and still need to overcome. There are still challenges in our lives. So walk with me on this journey as we quickly go through this. And I trust that I'll be able to do the text justice. Um, it is actually a vast topic, uh, but I'm going to take a few moments just to share with you. And hopefully, when we're done, you will see just the beauty of what God has laid out for us. He wants us to have total freedom and to walk in authority, complete authority. And um, so the enemy wouldn't want us, as a matter of fact, to be talking about this. He would want us to think that uh, these things don't exist, uh, and he would want us to be oblivious to it. So starting point, I'll start with what is a curse anyway? Why are we talking about this? Um, when we read in Scripture... Uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19 to 20, it says, This day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice, and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life, and he will give you many years in the land he sought to give to your forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for you and for me in the future, in the life, in the job place, in whatever area you may occupy, that he may give you life, that you may enjoy that life. But he says we need to choose because he has put before us blessing and curses, and we need to choose. So what is a curse? A curse is not something that is done to you by God or any other person. It is something that is chosen when we repeatedly sow ungodliness. We reap destruction. So we see that it is something that we choose. How can we choose a curse? It's absurd. It's, it's, it's quite crazy, isn't it? Because if I have to give my children some, a stone, for example, and, I don't know, a piece of bread, he won't naturally choose a, piece, a stone. He would choose the, choose the piece of bread because that is food. That is something good. But how can we choose curses? Well, Scripture is saying that God has put before us blessings and curses, and we must choose life. But curses have got a way of masking themselves in a way that seems good, that seems attractive to us, to the flesh, to our conscience, to our desires, to our nature. And therefore, we choose that only to realize it's not a good thing. I remember I was young and my uncle, I was staying with him and he was trying to give me some life lessons. 
And uh, he sat me down one day and he said, Nikki, you know, I see you playing with these friends and I see you, you the, the kind of things that these friends of yours do, it's not really good things. And he, he made this statement, and I'm sure some of us have heard this. He said, look, you know, there are some things that are so bitter, but they are masked with a whole lot of sweetness on the outside. And so when you take that and it's nice and sweet and, and you're eating it and only to find in the middle it's bitter, but you've already taken it, you've already eaten it. And sin is like that. And life is like that. And curses are like that. The things that uh, are laid before us. And God says, here I put it before you, but the enemy has got a tendency to take those things that are destructive and mask them in a way that are palatable to you and to me. And that's how we accept these things and take these things in our lives. The Old Testament called this destruction a curse. A curse happens when a person chooses to live outside of God's kingdom. And the consequences of that lifestyle affects their family and their community. The blessing of God came upon us when we live or comes upon us when we live according to his ways. We forfeit his blessing when we live contrary to his ways. So we forfeit his blessing and therefore subsequently choose the curse when we, for, when we choose to live differently from what God ordains and chooses for us. And uh, in Proverbs, we, there's a scripture that in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, it says, we know this very well, and a lot of people have spoken about it. it. Basically means, as a man thinketh in his mind, so is he. As we think, so we become. And it simply is that our thoughts inform our actions, and we tend to act out the things that we think about. If I think about something long enough, I begin to act it out. And as I do so, repeated over time, it becomes a habit, a habit that I, I do, certain tendencies that I start doing. And that habit, if I continue with it, it becomes a lifestyle. It becomes the very lifestyle that I, I start perpetuating. And we find that um, in many communities as well, there's, you, when we drive, I mean, I drive with my family uh, many times around the city of Cape Town, and there's certain areas where you drive and you can sense, you can see that there's a specific lifestyle that has been adopted. And naturally, some people adopt that lifestyle because for a long time, it doesn't, it doesn't always just start with the community. It starts with individuals, the, the thoughts that one thinks, the habits that one perpetuates becomes a very lifestyle that one begins to live out. And we see that in communities as well, that the communities themselves then create a culture. So different communities have got a, a culture that they're living out because of over time uh, of living out certain habits. And um, I was, just as a short story, um, as a young man, uh, I was born in... Um, in a very interesting um, time or village, as it were. And some of us have as well. And some of us will relate to this. I was about seven, eight years old, as, as I can remember. And I was busy walking on a dusty road. There, there were no paved, uh, tarred roads. I was busy walking. And as I was walking there, I came across some cuttings of a stick on the roadside. And there was some other stuff not worth mentioning here at the moment. And everybody knew that when you came across that, it meant something. And what it meant is that there was a curse or some spells that was released on that. Basically, there was a dominating factor in the community that was ruling of witchcraft. And this happened time after time that when one came across the road, you'd find these cuttings or shavings and there were other stuff. And if you happen to walk over it or knock it, then whatever was released there would attach itself to you. And people would actually get sick for a long, prolonged time and they would end up having to go see a witch doctor or, um, you know, or some of them actually went mad or died. 
But this one particular morning, I was, I was walking and I realized that I just happened to go over this and I turned around and I knew exactly what would happen because this was culturally acceptable and this was a cultural norm. For generations, the young and the elderly, this is what we knew. But something happened that morning is that I looked back and something rose up in me. I didn't know what it was, but there was an aggression and an anger. And I, I looked at this stuff and I spoke these words out loud. And I said, I will not succumb to this. No, I will not die. I declared this and I said, because I know there's a greater power out there, greater than this stuff. And I spoke that and, and it was a literal magnetic energy that was in me rejecting this and saying, I know there's a greater authority, there's a greater power, and therefore I will not succumb to sickness or death or madness. And I walked away, and I remember this clearly. And well, here I am. <laughs> I'm okay, I didn't die. So this is just to say that in, in different communities, there's a culture that is adopted that is accepted, and that is lived out for generations and generations. And in, um, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Scripture tells us that do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God's will, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Scripture is telling us here that do not conform any longer, meaning don't continue the same path anymore. You've been going on a specific journey. Don't continue on that thought process. Don't continue with that worldview. Don't continue with that way of living. Be transformed. And you're going to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, your thinking. What are you thinking? What are you meditating on? Take God's word and meditate on that. And you will be able to test, to prove what is good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. And God's will for you and for me is this. Scripture tells us in another place that God's thoughts towards us is good. To give us a good future, a hopeful future. His thoughts towards us are good. So when we have our minds transformed from the pattern of our thinking and our habits, it is not easy. It is not easy, but when we begin to meditate on God's word and we seek him and we cry out to him and say, God, help me. He's willing and able to help us to be transformed and to break the patterns of um, these habits that we have adopted in our culture and our lives. And um, the Bible also defines this, tr defines this or puts it this way, that there's a culture, and that is a biblical culture that we need to adopt. As children of God, as children who have accepted, as people who have accepted Christ into our lives, as our personal Lord and Savior. There's a new culture that we need to adopt. There's a culture that we need to grow into, and that is the culture of the kingdom of God. And it doesn't look like our culture that we've left. It, it looks differently. And without going too much into this, is that it is not saying forget who you are, but it is saying see who Christ is and begin to mirror that and become more like him. That is what it says. That is what it's all about. And therefore, we embrace God's way fully of living because his ways is contrary to ours. But we embrace his. And um, scripture tells us in Colossians Verse, chapter 1, verse 13 to 14. I would, I would like to read this. It says, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his son, he, in, he, his son whom he loves, in whom we have redemption of forgiveness of sin. 
I love that scripture. He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his son. It's a different culture. It, it's a different mindset. It's a different thought process. Why would we want to live as those who are still in darkness, in bondage? We need to change. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5, I would like to read that as well. Very beautiful and powerful scripture. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5, it says, Having predestined us for adoption as children through Jesus Christ, to himself, according to the good pleasure of his desire. You know, when one is adopted, they don't go with their culture to the adopted family. When a person has been adopted, they adopt, <laughs> as the word says, they adopt the culture of the new family. And we've got a few friends who have got adopted children. I don't see those children saying, I want, I want us to still do that culture but they adopt the culture of the new family. You and I have been adopted by God into his family. He predestined that he would adopt us. He would take us in. And in so taking us in, we start to live out, we start to follow, we start to do the culture of the new family. And that family is the family of Almighty God. Praise God. It is such a joy and such a privilege to be able to, to live out as Abba Father ordains for us. And um, it's so sad when you, you kind of, I've seen many times people that are trying to be helped, are trying to be, certain habits are trying to be broken over their lives. And those habits, they seem to be taken away or broken but then no sooner do those habits come back. And in the world, the difference with in Christ is that in the world, we try to stop habits. We try to break habits. But th that is just the fruit of the underlining problem. In Christ, in God, God knows that it is not just the flesh, it is not just the fruit, it's not just the habits that needs to be broken, but it is a stronghold. There's something underlining that is causing this perpetual, continual habit to come back. And scripture continuously, and, and not for this morning necessarily, but even the story I told about it, it's, an, it's a cultural underlying, there's a spiritual element that is causing a perpetual um, con or a continuing of the happenings and the habits. And the spiritual has to be dealt with. The spiritual aspect cannot be neglected. We are as natural as spiritual. As spiritual as we are, we are natural. As natural as we are, we are spiritual. And when we deal with the natural, we need to deal with the spiritual man too. And scripture helps us to do that. And I would like for us to just, again, keep in mind the scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 30. Because that scripture is fundamentally laying a spiritual foundation for us, which is that God says, I put before you heaven and earth, as he speaks through Moses. And I look at that and I say, Lord, heaven and earth. And in my mind, I'm thinking heaven, spiritual, earth, natural. So God is saying, I'm calling the natural, the spiritual things and the natural things to stand witness when you make that choice. And when you make that choice, the invisible and the visible is witness. And therefore, when we break habits, which are in the natural, we need to ensure that we break the spiritual elements in our lives as well. Those strongholds. What are the causes of a curse? We need to recognize these things. And how do we recognize? The causes of a curse are this. In Proverbs chapter 26, verse 2, Scripture says that like a flattering sparrow 
or a darting swallow, an undeserved curse, do not come to rest. This got me a little bit excited and so full of joy because it is a powerful scripture. It says, like a fluttering sparrow or a darting swallow, an undeserved curse does not come to rest. And when something comes illegally in our lives, it will not rest. And when it does rest, we have the authority in Christ Jesus to get rid of it. But what about the legal things that comes into our lives? We need God. We need God's power to help us break those things. So causes of a curse is idolatry and false worship. When we turn to worship idols, when we turn to worship anything other than God, these things are released in our lives, in our generations, in our lineage. And some of us may be struggling with things we didn't do. We did not. We, it, it, it is not us because we, we've chosen God. But there's still something in our bloodline that is still causing those things. In Exodus 20 verse 4, Five, scripture says, you shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I am the Lord your God. I am a jealous God and punishing the children for the sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generation. To the third and fourth generation. Bloodline. Generational. Straight down. What our forefathers did straight down, we begin to walk in those things. Those who hate me, and then he says, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me. His mercy transcends and goes far beyond what the curses go. Let us choose him, let us choose God, because our choice of him, our choice of adopting his culture, our choice of choosing the blessing of God, will set us up and set, us, and set our children's 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 children up. Because we're making the right choices. Other things that causes a curse is dishonoring of parents. This is in, 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 um, in scripture. It says, honor your mother and father, which is the first command, commandment that it may go well with you and that you may have long life. We need to honor our mothers, our fathers, our parents. When we dishonor them, we're causing ourselves not to have long life, subsequently. Injustice and violence, and we see these things happening when there's injustice and violence. We've seen it in our, our nation. We've seen it in other nations of the world. Because of injustices and violence that has taken place, it has caused a curse on the land. And now these things become environmental. It becomes atmospheric, set, setting a climate in certain areas because of injustices and violence. Spoken curses, such as that story that I told you about in, in, in cultures, in communities. There's curses that are spoken, things that are spoken. And we find ourselves as believers, we're not immune to that because of the things that we say. We need to watch our words. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, Scripture says, Do not let, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth but only what is helpful for the building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit the one who listens. So you and I are saved, but you and I slip up with this thing, with our tongue. And we need to bridle, we need to watch our words, because these unleashes unspoken uh, curses. Immorality, incense, and sexual perversion. All of these things bring about curses, robbing God, in robbing God, it is spoken in Malachi 3 verse 8. I won't read that. But robbing God in tithes and offering. But I, thought, I was thinking about this as I was preparing this. I think it's Proverbs uh, chapter 22 verse 4, where it says that the fear and humility of the Lord releases riches, or the wages of that is riches, life, and honor. And I thought about it. Oh my good, that... When we dishonor God, we're actually robbing God. 
when we dishonor God and there's no fear of God, but yet we want to reap riches and honor and life from him, we're actually robbing God. And we shouldn't do that. That is, we're setting us, ourselves up. He says, when you, honor, when, you, when you fear the Lord and you have humility, this is the fruit of it. Riches, life, and honor. But we want to reap honor, riches, and life, but we haven't sown the seed of humility and fear of the Lord. Illegitimacy. This is, wow. Our culture is plagued with this. It says, no one born of a forbidden marriage, nor any of his descendants may enter the assembly of the Lord, even to the 10th generation, even to the 10th generation. And in our culture, we have accepted it as a norm just to, yeah, just, <laughs> just to cohabitate. And I laugh because it is counterculture if one says, let us, do it this way. Find a wife, get married. We've accepted that it is normal. And children are born out of wedlock. And scripture is telling us that don't even to the 10th generation. Warning signs of a curse is continue and repeated business failure, financial lack from one generation to the other. And we may see these things happening where businesses have been tried and people are struggling. Some can't hold up their work. But there's also a consistent pattern of sicknesses and chronic diseases. We experience these things. And again, this is how the world thinks. This is culture. These are normal things and we begin to give it names. And we accept these things as normal. But what if, what if it is not normal? What if what we're struggling with are not normal, are not normal? Well, guess what? They are not according to God's kingdom. Why would he say, I am the Lord that heals you? Why would he say, I put none of these diseases upon you? It is not normal. And when we face these things, he is our deliverer. He wants to deliver you and I from every anguish and pain and struggle and lack of business and struggling in our work areas and chronic diseases and plagues. He wants to deliver us from all of those things because that is the kingdom of God. That is his kingdom. And this, there's patterns of mental illness and emotional dysfunction. And all of these things are a sign, a warning sign that something is wrong. Something is wrong. In Deuteronomy 28, verse 18, I'll read this quickly. You will be cursed. You will have few children. Your land will have few crops. Your cattle will be cursed with calves, and your flock will have few lambs. This is the Old Testament. It's not us. We're in the New Testament. No. This is still for those of the New Testament too, unless we reach out and cling to the hope that is laid before us, Christ Jesus. That is our hope. That is our saving grace. If we turn and serve idols, because when, when one reads this scripture, he begins with the initial premise of laying out the blessings. He speaks the blessings. He lays out the blessings. And then he says, but however, if you turn and serve other gods, these things shall fall you. These things shall fall upon your household, upon your generations, upon your lineage. And so we've struggled with these things because somewhere, somehow, in our generation, there's been a break. And uh, now that we've looked at what a curse is, we've looked at the warning signs of a curse. We've looked at what brings about a curse. I want us to now look at this thing and say, Lord, where we have legally caused this thing, where we have illegally, where we have legally caused this thing, let us repent. Where there's been an illegal curse on our lives, let us renounce it and rebuke it. And let us receive the grace of God. Um, just a, a quick uh, story as well, as we do that, uh, maybe just to understand, is that 
a, a quick story. There, there, there was a person, <laughs> there was a person called Anthropotita, and this is just a Greek word for humankind. And one day, Anthropotita was sitting in his house. God blessed the house. There was protection, and there was a knock at the door. And the knock came, knock, knock, and Anthropotita ran to the door and says, "Who's there?" And this, the voice said, "It's dear." And Anthropotita said, wonderful dear, do come in. He was very generous, very welcoming, good heart. He opened the door because dear was at the door. And dear said, but I thought you would ask dear who? And he says, no, 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 dear, do come in. Dear sounds like a great name. But dear wasn't dear as a fantastic person. Dear whispered under his breath and said, well, true name is Diablos. And Anthropotita allowed diabolical, as it were, or the accuser, the devil, into his life. Legally, but also illegally because he didn't ask. And sometimes we allow things in our lives because we have not asked, we have not questioned, we have not thought about it. We have allowed just a general way of thinking. We've gone with a general way of thinking and allowed things in our lives legally. And illegally by misunderstanding or being misled. And that is a tragedy in our world. We misunderstand things, we are misled, and we accept it. So let us repent. And I'm going to, uh, if you can just take a moment and just pray with me this prayer. And we're going to pray, I'm going to pray with your family. Just accept this. Lord, we have recognized that we have fallen short. We have recognized that our forefathers have fallen short. We want to repent this morning to renounce and rebuke. So, Lord, we reject, renounce every eels that has legally and illegally settled and established themselves over and in our lives. Where legally, Father God, we repent and ask your forgiveness and cleansing by the blood of Jesus. If through our generations, Father, we ask your mercy, we ask your mercy on behalf of our forefathers to cleanse our bloodlines and mark us afresh with the blood of Jesus. Where it was done illegally, Father God, we stand by faith in the name of Jesus. We bind up the worker and incubator of iniquity. We pull down every high thing and stronghold in Jesus' name. Spiritually and physically, we declare that Yahweh rebuke you. We command the curse to be broken. We command in the name of Jesus Christ every omen to be broken. Every incantation, assignment to be recanted in Jesus' name by the authority of Yahweh in Jesus' name. And now we call forth and command the freedom in our lives and the authority for which God has given us through the death and resurrection of Christ Jesus to rest in our lives. And now I'm just going to pray this for us to accept. Lord, thank you for your name. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the position the cross has put us in in relation to you. We praise you, Father. We thank you for the grace for which you've bestowed towards us and in humility and humbleness, trembling of heart, O oh God, we throw ourselves with open arms. O oh God, may we be engulfed and swallowed up by your love and your goodness. Father God, with love for your ways and your truth, we look to you. We're pressing towards you. And Father God, we stretch out our hands and we say before heaven and earth, the visible and invisible, the spiritual and natural, we choose life today. We choose life that we and our children may live and our children's children. We receive the blessing of good and we receive the blessing of life in abundance. Father God, we accept 
and embrace every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm in Christ Jesus. Oh God, that you may be glorified. Father God, we accept the free gift, the blessing for us to be able to enjoy the fruits of our labor. And we magnify your name. We exalt you. And we ask that may your light shine through our lives, that we may shine a light over our brothers and sisters still in darkness, that they may see you, that they may know you, that they may run to you, and they may walk in the freedom and authority that you have for each and every one of them. We praise you, God. Amen. And I would like you to, to encourage you at this time, after the service is done, you and your family, take time, go and settle down, pray this through, and more than that, take communion. Because in the blood there's life, and the blood of Jesus Christ speaks for you and for me, speaks on your behalf. Take communion with your families, break bread, and start anew, start a new life. Start afresh. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. And for those who may not know God, who may not know, and who may be wondering, am I under a curse? Am I, where am I? I want to just pray over you. And you may not even know God. Father, in the name of Jesus, the person who may not know you, who may not know that there's freedom stored up for them, who may not know there's hope awaiting them, I ask, Heavenly Father, that, that you would send your spirit to be able to convict. You would send, Father God, somebody that would meet in the workplace, in the marketplace, they would come across somebody, a messenger of the good news, a messenger of the gospel of peace. It may be us, Father God, we avail ourselves, but I ask, O oh God, that you touch that person and that you change their lives because the price has been paid and the curse has been broken in Jesus' name. May the Lord meet you at your place and minister to you. The Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you always and give you peace. And as I, I just finish off, I just want to tell us that there's freedom from a curse for which we've now prayed over, and we can have freedom. And whatever you encounter in your lives, just remember there's freedom. Meditate upon Galatians 3.15. Meditate upon Scripture. In Galatians chapter 5, Scripture says it is for freedom's sake, or Galatians 1, it is for freedom's sake that Christ has set you and I free. It is for freedom's sake that Christ came to set you and I free. You and I have been set free because Christ came for freedom's sake, your freedom and my freedom. Walk in freedom, walk in authority, and walk in the grace that God has for you and for me. Have an amazing week further. God bless.